Simply Cooking by Mmm Chef is brought to you in part by Orleans Physiotherapy. Specializing in a wide range of physical rehabilitation services, including acupuncture, cupping, and more. Orleans Physiotherapy, keeping your family moving since 1990. This program was recorded on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. As a chef, my honeydew list, I'm sure, looks a lot different than yours. Stay tuned to see what I'm going to create with all these different types of honey. Honey is one of the most versatile and oldest sweeteners. It actually also dates back all the way to Egyptian times and maybe even before that. I'm gonna be showing you today how you can use honey in so many different amazing recipes. I'm gonna be starting off with a sweetened iced tea, making a delicious parfait using my famous koyo and honey. I'm going to be doing a salad dressing as well as showing you how you can use it on an appetizer for um, entertaining. I have some friends who own a honey farm named em Emily and Jan. They own a honey farm called Peachy Honey Farm, which is located in St. Andrews, Ontario, not far from Ottawa here. And they sell their honey at New Grocery, where I sell my yogurt, as well as any honey that you buy at Farm Boy that even has a Farm Boy label on it is actually my friend Emily's honey. The name of the company is True Bee Honey and she has given me some great products to showcase to you today. Honey is my favorite sweetener because it's anti-inflammatory and it has so many natural healing uh, properties. And as a holistic chef, you guys know that's what I'm all about. So um, today we're going to be using Emily's delicious bee pollen. I'm going to be talking to you about the benefits of that and what you can use that for just a little later on. We have her liquid raw unpasteurized honey that I'm gonna be making something spicy with. And we've got her creamed honey, delicious, delicious. And her husband Jan cut me a fresh, beautiful piece of honeycomb that we're gonna be using for that appetizer I was talking about a little later on. So the first thing that we're gonna start with is making our iced tea. Um, most Americans iced tea isn't sweet, it's unsweetened tea, but here in Canada, all iced tea is sweet. So my favorite tea to use for iced tea is just some Earl Grey, but of course you can use your favorite, whether it's green or peppermint um, or anything like that. And then actually one of my favorite flavor combinations is honey and basil. You all know how much I love basil. So I'm gonna be adding a little bit of this fresh basil that I picked from my garden earlier to my pitcher here to steep the tea in. All right. I'm gonna be using the creamed honey for my iced tea. The reason I'm using the creamed honey is because it's a full jar, so I might as well. And uh, it will melt really, really nicely. And because I'm not really drizzling it or using it to drizzle on anything, it'll do well in, in this preparation. So I've got my honey, my tea bags, and my basil. I'm gonna grab my water that I've got boiling here on the stove. Oop. Don't want to burn myself, that's really hot. Awesome. Give this a good stir. I'm gonna set this to the side to cool for a little bit later. And look at that, the honey melted right off my spoon. That's exactly what we're looking for. The next thing I'm gonna be showing you is something a little bit unique. It's a condiment. I love condiments, I'm kind of called the condiment queen and I've got so many condiments in my fridge and uh, if you stay tuned to a later episode, you'll see that. But uh, I'm gonna be making my favorite famous chili spicy honey. I'm gonna grab my pot and my chili for that that I've got over here. I've got these really spicy chili flakes here. I love spice and I am not shy to heat, but if you are, you could use less than I am or you could use something like a sweet paprika so that it wouldn't be spicy at all. I'm gonna probably add about two tablespoons here into my pot and I've got my liquid raw honey and I'm gonna mix this in with my chilies and then I'm gonna salt it and get it on the stove to simmer. It's actually gonna be on very, very low 
It needs to be low because we want it to simmer and infuse the flavor. And we also want to not kill any of the beneficial things that are going on in the honey. This honey is raw and raw honey, uh, it's unpasteurized and what that means is it hasn't been heated before it's been packaged for us to buy. Um, and what that means is that it actually contains so much more nutrition and so many more anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties than honey that you would buy that has been pasteurized. A lot of the honey that you buy at the regular grocery store on the regular sweetener aisle is pasteurized, unfortunately. And this honey is done that way because they get honey from hundreds of farms from all over and it gets delivered to a factory and they, you know, put it all together and they simmer it to make sure that it um, is safe for you to consume and they put it into all the containers and sell it to you at the store. But what I suggest and what I live by is I only buy local honey. And what that means is that all of the honey that's in this jar came from the same hive. And all of the honey in this jar also came from the same, same hive. Um, and it wasn't pasteurized, which means that all of the anti-inflammatory and antioxidants and vitamins and minerals, as well as its healing properties, have actually been preserved because it's literally just raw honey taken straight from the hive. How neat is that? As a chef, I burn myself a lot and I cut myself a lot. And honey is one of those things that I always have on hand. If you cut yourself and you want the bleeding to stop, you can actually use honey to help not only stop the bleeding, but it also will uh, clean the wound for you. I'm going to get this pot on the stove and it's going to go on really, really low, like I mentioned, and it's going to, you know, infuse while we work on some other things. And uh, we'll see you after the break. This program is brought to you in part by Orleans Physiotherapy, providing treatments as well as education to promote healthy and active living. Orleans Physiotherapy, keeping your family moving since 1990. My chili honey was on the stove for probably a good 20 minutes on really, really low. It's gotten really melted and really spicy. If I give that too much of a smell, I might sneeze. Look at that lovely texture. That's what I'm going for. The salt has all evaporated or disintegrated in the bottom of the pan. Now this here, I store this in the fridge. It gets nice and kind of solidified. And then when I use it, I take it out of the fridge probably a half an hour before I want to use it. Um, this will store for up to six months and I love to eat it um, drizzled on a salad, drizzled on some fruit, drizzled on some meat. It's delicious on things like chicken wings or french fries um, and it's actually really, really good on pizza. Um, if you stay tuned to a future episode, you'll get to see that too. Along with that, I'm going to be using honey in some ways to show you how you can incorporate them to make your food and your meals a little bit healthier. Um, I'm going to be using it in a salad, which I'm going to prep right now, and then I'm going to move on to a yogurt parfait. So I was saying how I love honey and basil. The third thing to go along with that is peaches. So honey and peaches, what a perfect combination. Oh, they perfectly come apart too. I'm going to open these peaches up, probably just going to use three of them. Get the pits out. If you wring your knife around the peach ever so slowly and you turn, you can pull them apart really easily. There is two different types of peaches though, and sometimes you can get stuck with the ones that don't open very well, but I guess we really lucked out today. Awesome. So for this here, I'm going to be using the, oop, the creamed honey. I'm going to use this beautiful potter. I'm going to set up these peaches here. And the reason I'm, I'm using the creamed honey is purely because you eat with your eyes. And how beautiful is this little dollop of creamed honey going to be in the center of these peaches? It's just asking for me to fill it with this honey. Look at that. This is a lovely summer dish that you could serve to a party or in the afternoon or as a snack. I'm gonna be making this into a salad a little bit later, but you could just sprinkle some salt on here and eat that as a snack. Yum. 
All right, I'll push that to the side and give my hands a quick wash. So you all know that I love my Koyo and it is full of probiotics and healthy things for your gut and it's delicious and healthy and so yummy. Well, what goes better with that than honey? My friend Emily, who owns True Bee Honey, she sells her honey at New Grocery, which also is where you can get my yogurt. So next time you're there, you can grab a jar of my yogurt and a jar of honey and make exactly what I'm making here. I'm making a yogurt parfait. I'm making two for right now. I'm gonna eat one and have one ready for my hubby. And then I'm making two for later that we will have um, saved for another time. And I don't have a clean spoon, but I'm just gonna use this spoon that has honey all over it because I'm gonna use the whole jar of this anyway. Look at that smoothness. If you don't like coconut, you could use Greek yogurt. You could use regular plain yogurt. If you eat dairy or have issues with dairy, you could use goat yogurt. Or you don't even need to use yogurt at all. You could make this with something like a chia pudding or a chocolate pudding um, or even some milk. Look at that. So honey is really neat. It's old, it's one of the original sweeteners, it has antimicrobial and bacterial properties, it is healthy, and it is great for the envi environment. We all know how important bees really are to our environment, so um, honey is a wonderful thing that not only tastes good, but it also helps other things flourish and our farms and our gardens grow better, more nutrient dense, and bigger foods. I have these beautiful berries here with my yogurt parfait. I'm going to top it with some raspberries. This is the perfect time of year. Some blackberries. Did you know that you can get mono-specific honey? Mono-specific honey is honey that was made from one crop or one flower. And that segues me right into the honey that I'm going to be drizzling onto my yogurt parfaits. Now this honey is not my friend Emily's honey because it is something that is called Manuka honey. Manuka honey is a special kind that comes from only one area of the world, New Zealand or Australia. And it's also a one mono honey. It comes from one particular type of plant. Um, it has an active ingredient, which I can never say properly. It's called myoglethal or something like that. But what that active ingredient is, is it's an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antiviral ingredient. Just so much more than the regular honey that you would get locally. It is just 10, 20, 30, 40 times stronger than regular local honey. And what it actually can do is it can heal your gut and it actually helps to support all of the good bacteria in there and helps to kill all of the bad bacteria in there, which is why I'm gonna be using it with my coconut yogurt because both of those things together actually will create even more um, beneficial stuff going on in your gut. These strawberries are so beautiful. I'm not gonna take the greens off because as mentioned, we eat with our eyes first. Got some blueberries on the side there. I was talking about how um, you can use honey topically um, for cuts and scrapes. You can also use it topically as a face mask. You can use it topically on dry skin. If you suffer from something like eczema or psoriasis, it really helps to take off the dead skin cells and it helps regenerate new ones. Really, honey is probably one of the world's oldest natural um, medicines that we've been using for hundreds and hundreds of years. We can use it in a spoonful and take, take it when we have a sore throat. It helps with um, colds and flus. And the bee pollen, which I'm segue into right now, um, actually even exasperates that quality to it. So we've got the Manuka honey that's going to help with all the good bacteria and kill the bad bacteria. And it's gonna add a delicious sweetness, can't forget that. Manuka honey does have a little bit more of an amber flavor to it than regular honey. 
And in my opinion, it's just a little bit sweeter. And so now we go to the bee pollen. The bee pollen is so beautiful. Look how neat that is. All the different colors. It's all the B vitamins that are in here actually. And did you know that bee pollen is actually one of the world's most complete foods? It has the perfect ratio of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Of course, you would probably have to eat a few jars of this to sustain just off bee pollen. But even the small minute amount that you can eat really packs a big nutrient punch. What's great about bee pollen is for people who have allergies, they can actually eat bee pollen that is local to where they live and it contains the pollen and the allergens that are in the area that you live in and it helps prep your immune system for it. So if you include bee pollen in your diet at the beginning of let's say spring when everything is starting to, to come up and it happens to be local bee pollen to the area that you live in, you can actually help mitigate your allergies. You won't have as big of a reaction to, um, you know, when it's humid out and we have all the things growing. Um, and it actually can help build up your immune system so that moving forward, you have less and less and less allergies over time. All right, look at these beautiful parfaits. I'm gonna put a lid on those and get those in the fridge for later. And I've got these two here. Wendell's just over there, so he'll come in in a second and grab his yogurt parfait. And um, I'm gonna eat this on the break because I gotta grab a spoon from over there. So we'll see you soon. I took my iced tea out of the fridge. It's been cooling. It's not too hot, but it's still not as cool as I'd like it to be. So I'm just going to take my tea bags out with a slotted spoon and my pieces of basil that have steeped in there so nicely. Oh, I can't get them. It's like fishing, fishing in a, in a pitcher. There we go. I'm going to add some ice cubes to it to get it chilling, get it nice and cold. There's a perfect amount of space in here for some lemon juice. Can't have iced tea without fresh lemon. I have these beautiful lemons here, but surprise, surprise, they're pink inside. We have pink lemons. What is the difference between a uh, yellow lemon and a pink lemon? I don't know. They actually have similar flavor. The pink lemon is just a tiny little bit sweeter. They do have seeds, so I'm going to squeeze it over top of this strainer. There are a few other tricks to not get your seeds. One of them is to hold the lemon straight up so the seeds are always facing up and you squeeze it and the juice comes out and the seeds stay up there. But I want to get all the juice out so I'm using a fork to get all of that delicious juice. So pink lemonade is not a fake thing. Pink lemonade is a real thing. Originally was made with pink lemons. Now it's a fake thing because they make it pink, but the original pink lemonade was made with lemons just like these. Get rid of those, get rid of that. Even the juice is a little bit pink. The slightly floral flavor from the pink lemon juice along with the basil is just gonna be out of this world. I have to try this now. Get some fresh basil as garnish. Mmm. The basil and the lemon and the honey. Perfect, perfect flavor combination. Along with that, I'm now going to be working on my salad. So. Not only is honey yummy in breakfast, in beverages, in dessert, in snacks, it's also great as part of a main course um, and also great as part of an appetizer. I have all the beautiful peaches that I had set up here with a creamed honey. I'm gonna grab my salad greens and my little bowl here. In the bottom of my bowl, I'm going to be adding some olive oil. Can't have salad without olive oil. I want a little bit of spiciness to my dressing. 
So, oops, I'm going to drizzle in a tiny bit of this chili honey. Now, of course, as we talked about before, if you don't like spice, then don't add that to your salad dressing. You can just add your liquid honey, you can add manuka honey, um, or anything like that. Oh my goodness, I need citrus and I don't have any. I'm just gonna grab one. I have a real lemon here, not a pink lemon, that's okay. And I'm gonna do the trick that I just showed you. I'm gonna squeeze my lemon straight up to make sure I don't have any seeds in it because I don't need that much juice. And along with that, we always wanna have a little bit of salt in a salad dressing. So I'm just whisking that together. Because I like spice, I also like spicy greens. So um, I have some arugula and some radish um, sprouts here that I'm going to be using for this salad. There's no better tool than your hands. You could use a whisk of course, um, tongs of course, or two forks, but my hands are my favorite kitchen tool. Get that all nice and dressed. Oh, look at that. How beautiful is that? All right. Our salad is ready to go. Set that to the side there. And now I'm gonna show you that appetizer that I was talking about and we're gonna be using the lovely honeycomb that was cut fresh for me just a few days ago. Look at that. I think I'm gonna pick it up and show you. Cut a little piece. Look at that. You can see all the little different levels of the hive with all of the honey stuck inside all of the little tiny combs. They're all coated with wax, but when it's fresh like this, you can actually eat the wax. There's no harm to it. I have a beautiful abundance board that I made a little bit earlier that I'm gonna serve with my peach salad. So I'm gonna grab that. Look how beautiful that is. I love a snack board. I love to eat it as a main dish. I love to eat it as a snack. I love to have parties and entertaining that are just abundance boards. If you saw my abundance board episode last season, you know what this is all about. So I've got the sweet and the savory and the crunchy and the soft and what is missing? Honey. Honeycomb on an abundance board is something that will wow your guests and wow the people that you're serving. Most people, it's just not something that they think of when they are shopping to create a charcuterie or abundance board. Look how beautiful that looks on the board. I have some goat cheese and some blue cheese. I really like the contrast and flavor of the honey with the sweet and with the little bit of umami flavor, I guess you would call it, that comes from the blue cheese. And now the piece de resistance, of course, I like spice, so I'm going to drizzle a little bit of this spicy chili honey on my goat cheese. And I've got all these beautiful edible flowers. I thought, how perfect to have flowers, which is where the honey came from. Some of the edible flowers, when you eat them, they actually taste sweet like honey. Thank you for joining me today and learning about honey. This is something that you should add to your pantry and you should always be looking for local. I'm sure at your local farmer's market or even at your local grocery store, there are many, many um, local honey options and some small honeybee farmers that you can support by buying their honey and making delicious, delicious eats. See you next time.